Okay, this video from June 12th, 2014 of the construction, I did a little special effect that I will show you right now. Started the courtroom, something people will recognize. And they had this kind of barricade set up on the third floor. So I took the footage on the outside and then took footage from the other side. So it looked like you're walking through the wall into the construction to see what's going on. So let me show you what there is to it. Okay, first this footage. Let me use this trip again, trick again, review on project. Okay, so here's the original footage that we start with. I just got as close as I could to the wall. Okay, that's our first shot. Now there's two more pieces of video that I used. This one was a transition clip. Let me show you that one. So this is kind of the plastic wrap that was on the back side of this wall. So when I filmed it from the other side, it had this, this plastic wrap on it. I actually ended up reversing this video because if you notice, it starts far away going close, but I discovered that when I played it here, I actually want it to be going, you know, as if you're coming like out of the wall this way. So I, instead of coming that way towards the wall, I want you to be coming out of the wall. So. I'll show you how to reverse the clip as well. Okay, and then the third clip is this footage from the far side of the wall. Where'd it go? Oh, here it is. So I just started with my back to the wall as close as I could get. and took some footage walking away from the wall. Now this plus 22, minus 22, these are actually adjustments in the, um, in the speed of the clip because it didn't look very continuous at first. I think I sped this one up or I might have slowed it down. I think I sped it up though. So it would look like you were just walking consistently, like it's no big deal to walk through the wall. Yeah, I think I sped it up just a little bit, which I think we talked about in another video, but let me show you real quick just how we might do that. Time remapping speed. Yeah, it's at 120%, you might notice. And then it goes back down to 100%. This is what a keyframe looks like for time remapping. Let me, I'll show you real quick. So if you control click, it will enter a keyframe like this, and as you pull it apart, it allows you to make the transition from one speed to another a little bit more gradual. We don't want a keyframe there, just showing you how to do it. And then the reason that this is plus 22 minus 22 is, let me show you another video clip real quick. If I increase the time remapping, the speed of this clip, it doesn't change my audio. So that's why you get kind of this discrepancy here. This one's still long. If you really want to do it, you can unlink them and use the rate stretch tool. Grab this and shrink it down. The only problem is it changes the pitch as well. So if I'm making it shorter, the pitch is going to be higher. But since we don't use the audio in these videos, I didn't really have to worry about it. There are ways to increase the speed of the clip without increasing the pitch in Adobe Audition, but I won't go into that right now. So here's what we need. Our first clip going in, the clip of the transition, and our clip on the other side of the wall. So let's go ahead and build it real quick. Okay. I'm going to 
reveal in project so that I can drag this one over here. We're going to reveal this one in project. There it is. And I also need this one right here. Reveal in project. Zoom back out. It's going to go right. This is going to go on video two because it's a transition between the two. Now, as I mentioned, with this clip, I decided to reverse it. If you right click on the clip, go to speed duration, you can reverse the speed of the clip, which will give you, oh, actually, if you maintain audio pitch, that will help. Anyway, that might have solved the problem I was just talking about. So we want to start, I kind of got close and then I pulled away as I was turning off the camera. So we don't want that part, we probably want up to there. Let's see. I feel like when I'm running this screencast software, it kind of slows down my computer, so usually things aren't quite this choppy. Okay, so then we've got that. It comes out. And probably, honestly, by then, we're going to want to fade out. So I'm going to fade this out. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to minimize, or I'm going to click on this little eyeball, which will make it so this video doesn't actually show up, because right now I want to work with the videos underneath. So I'm going to kind of, yeah, we'll leave that part. Now, as I was making this one, I kind of had to decide how close do I want to get before I cut out. Because it gets really close. Obviously here I kind of start moving sideways again as I'm preparing to turn off the camera, but I think I decided to do it about there. Really it just depends on you and how you want to clip it. Now the same thing with this video after. I have to wait till we actually start moving, which is, uh, let's do about there, okay. Now, what I want to happen here, as I was explaining in a different video with the black and white special effect, um, oh, let me turn this back on. So as soon as this one shows up, if it's at 100% opacity, it doesn't matter what opacity the one underneath it is at, you're not gonna be able to see it. So I need to start this with a lower opacity if we're gonna see, you know, if we're gonna have some kind of transition. So I'm control clicking to add some keyframes. I'm going to drag this keyframe down, and I don't ever want it at full opacity, just because it's supposed to be kind of this transition as we walk through the wall. And I don't like that really sudden jump, so maybe what we'll do is bring this up a little bit quicker, and then actually fade this one out. You know what, let's try this. If we do a cross dissolve, it's just going to automatically kind of transition between these two for us. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, I'm just pushing the right arrow to go slowly. That's not bad. We're starting to see the other side. Maybe a little bit too soon because it's not moving yet. So let's make this cross dissolve even shorter. And actually, it's kind of counterintuitive, but because this, the cross dissolve that's into the next clip is longer, it actually means that that clip's going to show up sooner. It's kind of a weird way of thinking about it, but... Okay, let's see... You know what, I think that this stuff shows up too soon, actually. I think we want to move this clip down a little bit because, I mean, you're not going to, until you're actually getting through the wall, maybe here, we don't really want to see that stuff. And then maybe it'll come up a little bit quicker. So it's kind of a quick, oh, through the wall. Okay, and then I'm going to bring this 
we really don't need this to be very long either. Because once again, like I was saying, I mean, you want it to be kind of, you're in the, in the wall just for a second. Okay, again, this needs to go that way just a little bit so that we're actually moving by the time the video starts. Let's try that. And yeah, maybe a little bit more. Anyway, this is the general idea. You just kind of toy with this a little bit. You kind of get that feeling that, oh, you're coming out. Maybe I'll bring this down just a little bit. Like you kind of run into something and then you come out of it. Um, let's give this a little bit more of a dissolve. Anyway, that's the idea. That's my one minute doing it. Here's the more finished one that took me longer. So anyway, that's the general idea behind it and the things you would need to do that affects.